Hello and welcome. I'm David Fink and I make fine violins and violas in the beautiful mountains of Western North Carolina. If you're looking for a professional level instrument and finding the task to be difficult, if not overwhelming, <laughs> you're not alone. And I'm glad you're here. In this video, I'm going to present a straightforward strategy that I've gleaned from watching really accomplished players go through the task of quickly evaluating an instrument. Because the problem essentially boils down to this. So many instruments, so little time. And have I ended up with the right one? Well, if you can spend less time on instruments that hold little promise for you, you'll have more time to delve deeply into those that inspire you and ultimately end up coming up with a decision that you can have great confidence in. And then there's also the question of value. Am I spending my money wisely? Well, I'll bring my perspective as a luthier to offer you some guidance on this question as well. Let's start with four basics. Always use your bow when trying a new instrument. The fewer the variables, the easier it is to evaluate anything. And this is a major one and an easy one to keep constant. Have your current instrument on hand, because selecting a new instrument is essentially a process of comparison. So it's essential to have a benchmark that you can compare to, especially if that benchmark is already a pretty good instrument, but even if the new instrument will be a significant jump up in quality. It's also crucial when you're trying instruments in a room you're unfamiliar with. The acoustic of the room has a dramatic impact on the character of any instrument. And having one that you're familiar with there on hand will help you effectively gauge the impact of that factor. Play as many good instruments as you can and play them critically. The wider your experience, the more confidence you'll have in your final selection. Utilize your fellow colleagues, whether they're professional players or students. Use your teachers. Visit shops that have good inventories. And visit some luthiers. And I would encourage you to use the quick evaluation strategy I'll be outlining just ahead out of respect for other people's time and their instruments. This is a tough one, but keep in mind that the characteristics of your current instrument are deeply imprinted on you from hundreds, if not thousands of hours of use. And when you try new instruments, differences that you note may at first seem troubling or negative, but they may just be differences that you could get used to or even appreciate in the future. A scientifically rigorous 2012 study involving 10 international soloists, six fine old Italian violins, and six contemporary instruments concluded that the players generally preferred the newer violins. This study showed that fine modern violins may compare favorably with some of the very finest old instruments. Now, interestingly, among this group of soloists, the least favorite instrument, an old Italian, was the favorite of one soloist. That certainly illustrates to me the inherent subjectivity of player preference and the need to have confidence in your own choices as well. The specifics of my evaluation strategy are coming right up, but first, here's how to use that strategy when comparing instruments. So to begin, play your own instrument just to remind yourself of what you love about it, what you like about it, and what you dislike about it, and also, very importantly, to gauge the acoustics of the room. Then you begin playing the new instruments and eliminate those that hold little promise for you. But when you get one that excites you more than your current instrument, utilize that as the base comparator. And you'll go back to it occasionally to refresh your ear and remind yourself of its playing characteristics. Now, if you come across another instrument that you like more than the current base comparator, 
The old one goes out and the new one becomes the base comparator. And if it's a draw, you just set either one aside till the end. Now, hopefully when you get through all the available instruments, you'll have no more than one or two instruments that you can then evaluate further on an at-home trial basis. Begin with slow bows across the strings and judge the timbre, resonance, and unity across the strings. Play a rapid first position two octave G scale and judge the responsiveness and evenness across the strings. Play a slow legato one and a half octave scale up each string across the full dynamic range and explore its timbre and its malleability and also keep an eye out for any wolf notes or responsiveness issues, especially in the higher positions. Match pitches between strings and explore their timbral relationships. Play spiccato passages, perhaps from the scherzo from Schumann Symphony No. 2, or Kreutzer No. 2, or simply spiccato scales, and this is to test the responsiveness of the instrument across a wide range. Now play a concerto opening, like the Tchaikovsky, or the Brahms, or the Bruch, or early in Mozart V, and explore the broad expressive range of the instrument. Finally, Explore the instrument's articulation, chordal responsiveness, and clarity with a passage from Bach, perhaps the Chaconne or a fugue from the unaccompanied suites. Do I need to mention that no matter where you are in the program, if you've decided the instrument's not for you, just cut it short and move on to the next one. Once you have a few finalists to consider, it's time for a lengthier at-home evaluation, gathering all your pool of candidates together at the same time. I suggest you also bring in a couple of instruments from luthiers you might want to consider as well. Many, me included, will ship instruments on a trial basis if it's too far to make an in-person selection. Now, you know what to do at this point. You have to play the heck out of those instruments, play them in relevant halls, play them for people you trust, have those same people play for you as well, and then make your decision. For most people, setting a budget will helpfully narrow your choices at the outset. But be aware that a higher price among high-level instruments does not increase the likelihood that any particular instrument will be a better one for you. Many factors go into pricing, and some important ones may have little relevance to the actual music-making capabilities of the instrument. The price of newer high-level instruments usually compares very favorably to good older and historic ones. But there's often a readier market for historic instruments than there is for newer ones, especially from little-known makers. Yet, an instrument from a lesser-known maker is likely to fall on the lower end of the pricing scale, perhaps in the ballpark of a nice used car. And maybe that's a helpful way to think of it. A car is an item that is not looked on as an investment per se, but as something to use and enjoy and that case can be made for violins too. Also bear in mind 
that old instruments are notoriously finicky about changes in location and weather, while newer ones have a much better reputation for stability. I'm not dismissive of old instruments. They are wonderful in so many ways. But good players should be seriously considering contemporary instruments as well. What about instruments that seem to hold promise but have issues? A lot can be done to shape the tone and playability of an instrument through adjustments to the setup, and even major structural issues can be effectively repaired. But dealing with such issues complicates the selection process and may add an unwelcome degree of uncertainty. I'll close out with a few suggestions on how to not just look at an instrument, but to really see it. And some of these suggestions are aesthetic, and some are more practical, but either could be deciding factors if you're trying to choose between two closely matched instruments. Is the varnish clear? Can you appreciate the beauty of the wood beneath it, or does it have an opaque, paint-like quality? Is the color attractive? Is it monochrome, or does it show interesting variety? Is it applied evenly? or thinly, or thickly? Is there a visible ground layer below the varnish that enhances the wood's beauty? Does the surface appear flatly polished, or is there surface texture? If the instrument is antiqued, does it appear truly authentic? Judge the arching of the top and the back, the cutting of the F-holes, and carving of the scroll. See the shape of the corners and the inlaying and joining of the purfling, and the shaping of the edges. Is the neck shaped comfortably? Does the nut blend into the fingerboard and fingerboard into the neck seamlessly and elegantly? Are the strings evenly spaced there? Is the bridge perfectly fitted to the top? Are its lines gracefully cut? Does it appear coarse or elegant? Are the strings evenly spaced on the bridge, and do the string heights feel right? The pegs, of course, should work well, and the end button properly seated. If it's an older instrument, you'll want the advice and guarantees of an experienced luthier or a reputable shop to rely on. Finally, judge the overall craftsmanship. Do lines flow gracefully? Is there a unity of the back and the sides and the top, the neck and the scroll? Is the overall sense one of refinement or one of coarseness? I hope you've enjoyed this video and you'll find it helpful in your search. I wish you a lot of luck and perhaps you'll try one of my instruments too someday soon. I look forward to it. Thank you.